Okay, so this is part two of our um, of our discussion of stick slip, and we're going into the the concept of of um, well, we're, we're, we want to use a, a tool other than the block that Coulomb friction block in Simulink, and so to do that, we'll have to talk a little bit more about uh, this stick slip phenomenon, and 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 the framework we use is one that's called state transition. And this is a slightly different use of the term state. Remember, we're talking about state variables. Um, but one way to think of it is that the state is, is the kind of the, the sum of, not the sum, but the, you know, if we know the values of all the state variables at any instant in time, then we say that we know the state of the system. And um, and, this, and these, this system makes transitions from one kind of state to another. So one kind of state is the stuck state, uh, and the other one is the sliding state. And, and the conditions that move it from one to another are, are really well understood, right? So if the sum of the forces are less than the friction, uh, that maximum friction force, and the velocity is zero, then, um, then it's stuck. But if the velocity is not zero, it's sliding by definition. So it's really, it's, it's this knowing how to find when it moves from one state to the other. It's important. So we, we, we can draw this thing called a state transition diagram um, and it's it's pretty powerful and in this case it's pretty trivial but I think it, it really gets the um, the essence of what it is so the blocks represent uh, states of the system and so one's stuck one sliding and in there I describe how the equations behave when it's in that state so when it's in the stuck state uh, friction is is whatever it needs to be to maintain zero acceleration okay and in the sliding state, the friction is constant at the threshold. So this describes how the friction enters into the equations inside the block. Uh, outside the block, near the zeros, we describe the um, what are the conditions for transition from one to the other. So on the right-hand side here, we make this transition from stuck to sliding when um, the, the external forces or the sum of all the non-friction forces are such that um, they come to a value that's higher than the threshold force, than the maximum uh, friction force. Um, on the other side, the sliding um, friction is, is uh, to make that transition from sliding to stuck, uh, two things have to happen. One is that the velocity has to get to zero. It can't, it's not going to just instantaneously get stuck from a non-zero velocity. And, um, and there's not enough force to get it to to push it through the zero velocity, right? There's not enough external force. So um, there's really two conditions here. The one is the velocity has to be close to zero or at zero. And the other one is that the um, some of the non-friction forces have to be lower than the threshold. Then it gets stuck and it moves into the other state. So we want to capture that in Simulink. And of course, we've just used these blocks in this graphical representation uh, of the equations. And, and I think we'd agree that this doesn't this doesn't really fit in that framework well uh, so we'll use something called the um, we'll use a user defined function we're going to go into the editor we're going to write our own function uh, and, and store it in an m file and the way to access a custom function is um, is through this this block here so the library here is user defined functions the um, the block we're looking at is the interpreted uh, MATLAB function block and uh, and then we'll write uh, a f function in the MATLAB editor. And so, so what I wrote here is is uh, just what the first line of a function looks like when you're in the M file editor. Uh, just to remind you what it is. So it's different than a than a script file. So that's a script file is also an M file. It's just a series of commands that uh, when you execute it from the command line, it just plays the commands as if you would type them right there. Uh, but a function is something that's very different. It gets parameters passed to it and it and it passes results back out and 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 it while it's executing it really has its own workspace so it's very different than just um, typing in the commands from the, the command prompt so I created here uh, the first line of a function that I'm calling my function name and you can see that's sort of a placeholder for you um, when you type any kind of keyword into the MATLAB editor um, if it recognizes it, it turns it blue to kind of let you know that yep this is a special word so um, so the format of the first line of the function is the keyword function then a variable through which you will pass the results and I just called it out 
to be descriptive of it. So out equals my function name of in. So in is the is the vector through which you pass the input variables, or which Simulink will pass the input variables to this function. You you process the the um, input variables, create uh, a value for out, set out equal to that, and then you return into the um, into the simulation. So um, in, like I said, is the variable that comes from that comes from the simulation. It can be a vector, in, and it becomes a vector as if if the signals are multiplexed. So the f the top line, the one nearest the top of the page, will be in sub one. The next one will be in sub two, and so on. Um, when you decide on a function name, you it will also be the name of the file that this is stored in. And then out is the uh, is the variable name which is computed. Now keep in mind that you can call in and out my function name anything you want just as long as you're consistent. Okay so so what I have here is a little snippet uh, of, of code or of a simulant diagram uh, and I put the, the uh, interpreted MATLAB function block here so the output here that coming out of the right of it will be the variable out you define. Um, the first line come in the first line of the multiplexer will be in of one and then this will be in of two and so on. So, so that's just kind of see what it looks like. Um, when you double click on that simulation block you get um, you get a, this dialog box and so by default you see the left hand side and it shows under MATLAB function sign and the output dimensions minus one. So output dimensions is just what it sounds like. It's the dimension of the output vector. Um, we're going to be using a scalar, but the de default for this is minus one, which is mean it's the same dimension as the input. Um, so, um, so when you write this, for example, for that function we just saw, um, I I put in the function name, my function name, and and I have of u because that's the default. U is the default variable name for something that gets passed in on a Simulink function call. And then the output dimension I specifically set as one because that's what we have from that um, from that example there. Um, and then one final note is that function, the M file, the file that contains the function, should be in the same subdirectory where we're operating, where you've stored the simulink, where MATLAB is looking at this point in time. There's ways you can get around that, but that's the easiest way to do. Okay, so so I modified um, my simulink model. You see I still have the 1 over mass here, I have the velocity, I have the scope. I added a, another line to the scope. Um, here's my sine wave and here's my interpreted function and I have two things going into the function. I have the external forcing function and I have the velocity. So here's the velocity on this line, here's the external forcing function. So there's a multiplexer, so this is u being passed to my function. It creates a force. And so on this multiplexer, I have four lines. I have the um, the first one is the forcing function. The second one is the velocity. The third one now, the third one is the um, the force. And the um, last one is the um, summation of forces. It's the whole thing, right? So so that's a that, that's just the fourth one. So the the forcing function, the sine wave will be yellow. The uh, velocity will be Mahenta. The third line, um, which is the MATLAB, I'm, the, I'm sorry, the, the friction force itself, that'll be cyan. And then this fourth one here, which is the summation of forces, will be red. Okay, the function itself is really fairly straightforward when you think about it. Um, I, uh, I Here's that function. Uh, keyword means that it turns blue. Out I call the function stick slip of u. I always like to do this. I like to start with a little a few comments in the header and I define what u1 and u2 are. So it's it's a nice self-reference. Sorry I can look in there and so that means I only have to click back once to my um, simulation and say okay what's u1? That's the first one on this multiplexer. That's the input force and the second one is the velocity. So if we click back over here say yep U1 is the external force, U2 is the velocity, out is the friction force. That's what we're trying to compute. I um, Here are the, the parameters we're working with. 
um, m is the mass is 2, mu is 0 0.8. So I can compute the threshold force, and I'll use the same terminology we've been using. F0 is equal to m times 9.8 times mu. And then I'm, I'm allowing myself to actually put in a viscous friction factor on top of this, um, though I, you see I've set it equal to 0 here. So I have a, a, a nested if then else statements here. So the first thing I do is I check and see whether we're stuck. So we're stuck if the velocity is zero. Um, and uh, and of course here's the here's the thing with computers, right? Uh, it's never going to be zero, right? There's always but but we just want it to be close to zero. So I arbitrarily chose a number um, one times ten to the minus two point oh oh one or I'm sorry point oh one meters per second. So if velocity is less than zero. I'll say okay, we're stuck. But, um, but let's see what the outside forces look like. So the outside force is U1. If the absolute value of that is greater than the threshold, then okay, we might be zero, but we're not really stuck, we're unstuck. So I can compute the out as the, the friction force, which is um, F0 plus the viscous friction B times the absolute value of the velocity. And then I put the right sign on it here by picking up the sign of uh, the velocity. This way it's going to oppose velocity, right? Which is what friction always does. Um, so so this F said we're stuck, okay? It, we're at zero. Uh, and, um, but but then, then this first nested if said we're not stuck. Um, so if so if this condition, in other words, the outside force greater than F0 is not met, we fall into this one that says, okay, we're stuck, and we make the out variable, the friction force, just equal and opposite to the forcing function, so that the summation of forces goes to zero. So that ends this part of the clause for the stuck part. So now we know it's not stuck, it's sliding if it falls through this else. And we make, if it's sliding, it's just the equation for the friction force, the same thing we had when the unstuck condition here. And we ended here. So this is a this is a um, uh, one of many ways you can write this. But the key thing here, and this is something to keep in mind, uh, I'm going to go back to the fact that the output of the integrations, the states of the of the simulation, are the key. So if you're going to do conditions on, uh, you know, the, 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 on, on whether you're stuck or not, start with and build your decision tree around the state of the system. In other words, start with looking at the velocity and then and then the, the, the force was what we looked at next. But the really thing the real thing that decides we're stuck, we're not stuck, was the velocity. And that's the that's the state of the system. In fact it's the only state of the system since it's a first order system. So if I ran the simulation with too low a force, I get um, I get no motion and if I let if I let it move a little bit I get I get this motion. So let's actually get out of PowerPoint and go back to um, to Simulink. So here's my um, interpreted function. You can see I called it. I double click here. It's just called stick slip of u. Its output dimension is one. Pretty much what we expected. It has everything else we'd had before. I'm going to start with an amplitude of ten. And uh, let's hear the chime. It was pretty quick. And, uh, and it didn't move. There, see, it's stuck. If I zoom in on it, it's really stuck, right? I'm here, I got 10 to the minus 3. I'm really zooming in. So this is, these tick marks, this first tick marks are 0.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So it, it's truly zero. If, no matter how long I zoom in, it's really working. If I look at this graph of all the signals, um, I see the red line, which is the accelerator. I'm sorry, the velocity. Um, actually, the red line is the sum of forces. The the um, acceler the velocity line is hidden behind it. But here, here's the interesting thing, right? The yellow is the driving function. The magenta, I'm sorry, the cyan is the um, the friction force. And you can see what it's doing. It's matching the the driving force and keeping the block stuck. Just what we'd expect. Now I'm going to change that amplitude up to 20. And by the way, um, 
this is the variable step size solver. This is the default solver. I cranked up the tolerance a little bit. So instead of 10 to the minus 3, it's 10 to the minus 6. But it's taken nice big steps. It's simulating it very, very quickly. So now I've, I've got the forcing function up to 20. I look at my velocity graph, and sure enough, look at that. It's stuck. It's moved. It moves a little bit. It's stuck again. It moves a little bit. So pretty much, you know, it's, in fact, it's exactly the same shape we saw when the block uh, was doing its thing. If I look at the all signals graph um, and pull it up, it's much more complicated. So here's my forcing function going from 20 to minus 20. And here's my velocity now in this hot pink color. And because of the scales, you, you, it looks a little different. But yeah, if you look at, uh, bring up my velocity graph from before. So you see it goes from 2 and then goes down to minus 2. Um, sure enough, here's this is 10. So that looks like it's 2 and then it's minus 2. What else, what else can we see here? Well, the, the, the friction force is the cyan. And you can see that while it's stuck, it's equal and opposite to the driving function, but when it's stuck, it stays constant, at a constant level. And then jumps up here. Um, you can see it, there's a there's some discontinuities here that, that are to be expected. It's working just fine. Um, the, the only things that, that I didn't like is going on at this transition and at this transition. See this kind of spikiness in here. And what's happening is that it, there is a little bit of a of a numerical uh, artifact going on here, but it's really fast, and it doesn't really affect the um, the 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 way the system is. And what's happening? It's a little numerical glitch that uh, or the velocity uh, is really really close to zero, and it just got a little bit. It just changed sign. It went from like ten to the minus six to minus ten to one times ten to the minus six, and then. Um, and, and, and so the friction force flipped from this 15 to minus 15 for just one just one time step and it went right back again. Same thing happened here. Um, there's probably ways to, to fiddle with the, the parameters a little bit to make it better. But um, generally, it, work, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. If we did added viscous friction, we'd see that this line here would be a little bit curved as, it, as the velocity of the, of the system had, had impact. But it, 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 did, it did the job. So um, I'm going to leave it here. We've got this is about a 15 minute video. What I want you to do is go back to, the, to um, um, Blackboard and, and look read, read the assignment. So what we're going to do is take this concept of the uh, script file and put it into your last homework assignment, that machine tool drive that had stick slips. So get the block out of there that you used, put in a script. And and um, and 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 make it work, and get it, get it to actually do the stick slip and, and not have not have it chattering all over the place, and then take it one more step, which is introduce static and kinematic friction. So the static friction and and just you know and instead of mu I used just an F zero was what was called in the book. So I think it was thirty newtons. So make the static friction, the breakaway friction, 10% higher. So make that 33 newtons and then the kinematic friction, uh, 30 newtons, what we had before. And, and, and let's see how that works. So I think that's uh, more than enough to talk about. And uh, 